Um, welcome to my channel. Uh, on this channel, we'll be dishing out some um, good web development tutorials. Uh, so we'll be dishing out some tips, some techniques, um, and other stuff needed in developing a, a real web project every time. So just make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to uh, get um, notifications anytime I, I upload on this channel. So um, basically today we're, we're going to be doing a basic introduction to um, web development programming languages. The languages that you need to develop um, a web project. So um, first of all, what are the basic web development programming languages? Uh, there are a lot of lots and lots of programming languages uh, which today they are used in developing a website. We are going to talk about the basic ones which are HTML, it's called Hypertext Markup Language, the CSS, the Cascadian Style Sheets, the JavaScript, the PHP, uh, the Hypertext Preprocessor, formerly known as Personal Homepage. So these are the uh, four basic web development programming languages that are used in developing a website or developing a web project. So um, HTML is a markup language that web browsers use to interpret and compose text, images, and other materials into visual or audible web pages. Uh, HTML is a basic and most used language of any website. Every website is programmed using HTML. Sites you see um, online these days, most big websites like Facebook, Google, uh, YouTube, and so many other uh, big websites you find they are programmed using HTML as a basic um, um, structure for, for their website, for their pages. Um, HTML is a standard markup language for creating web pages. I said that earlier on. Uh, this is a stand-up markup language that every website, every big website, small website, and if you're going to develop any website, you need to have a, 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 a staunch knowledge of HTML. Uh, also, HTML describes the structure of web pages using markup. Um, <clears throat> structure of web pages uh, are being described by HTML. We have um, so many different um, tags, so many different structure in which a website, a web page, sorry, is, is, is supposed to follow, like starting from the head to the body. And some other um tags that's going to be in the body, then we have different um di some different tags which are supposed to be in the body. Then um HTML elements are represented by tags. Every HTML element has an opening and a closing tag. HTML describes the structure of web pages using markup. I already said that. Learn, oh, I guess this is a duplicate here, yeah, it's a mistake on my hand. Okay, let's just forget about it. Um, HTML documents imply a structure of nested elements. When you mean nested elements, I'm going to show that to you in a minute now. I'm going to explain more on that in a minute now. <clears throat> HTML tags, as I rightly said before, indicated by in the document by HTML tags enclosed in angle brackets. The angle, angle bracket are used to represent uh, HTML tags. Whenever you see angle bracket, just like the greater than or equal to the greater than and less than sign. Like for example, we have the bracket, angle bracket and P inside it. This uh, this is a paragraph tag in HTML. And an element is indicated by a pair of tags, a start tag and an end tag. You can see the P here is just with the without this without the backslash is the opening tag, the start tag, then with the backslash is the um, end tag. A start tag may also include attributes within the tag. The general form of an HTML is therefore this is the syntax for um an HTML tag. We have the tag, the name of the tag, it can be h1, p, head, body. Whichever tag you want to use, and it contains some um attributes, like you have to. Not all tags contain attributes too, but if you want to use the attribute, you have the um attributes one. You can 
have more than one or two, three, four attributes in a tag, in it in a tag, which is normally in the opening tag. And right after closing the opening tag, you have the <coughs> content of the tag. Then you have the closing tag, you have to close the tag. Every HTML element has an opening tag and a closing tag. I'm repeating that again. So some elements are defined as empty elements and take the form. Like you have the tag, you have the uh have the attributes in it, and some don't mostly some don't have most of all um HTML tags have an opening and an ending tag, but there are a few that doesn't have um this that is that it's not mandatory for you to have a closing tag like the hr tag the br tag and so many other tags but yeah these are some basic tags some basic um html tags that you will need when developing a website um we have the doc type html the doc type declaration defines the defines these documents to be an html file um, the HTML itself, this is an HTML tag, is the root element of an HTML page. Notice you find this um, HTML tag in every HTML page. Uh, and on every HTML page. So we have the head tag, which contains meta information about the documents. We also have the title tag, the title element that specifies, so it can also be called a tag, the title tag that specifies the title for the document. Then the body tag which contains the visible page content everything that goes in the body tag it's visible to um, a normal user then the h1 tag is also in the body tag the p tag is also in the body tags every other tags can fit into the body tag except the link tag which is using the css the title tag which is used for the title of the page title of the document title of the page is found in the head you can it can be placed in the head <clears throat> in the head section in the head tag of an html page there are some html versions you have the html itself uh, i won't talk about the history i'll just give a brief um timeline of html versions you have the html 1991 you have the html 2.0 in 1995 you have the HTML 3.2 in 1997. You have the HTML 4.01 in 1999. You have the XHTML. And HTML 5 is the current one we are using, which has lots, lots more functionality over the previous versions of HTML. HTML 5 is used in almost every web page today. It came out in 2014. It is very, very good for web developers. It's very easy. Very easy to learn. So the next one I'm going to be talking about is CSS, the cascading style sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements are displayed on the screen or in other media. CSS uh, is just like a plus to HTML, just a garnish to HTML. CSS saves a lot of work. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. External style sheets are stored in CSS files. If you're developing a website or a web page, you need to use CSS in order to spice up your website, in order to make it look attractive, to make it look nice. So why CSS? CSS is used to define styles for web pages including the design, layout, and variations in display for different devices and screen sizes. CSS solved a big problem of formatting, e.g. imagine you just um, adding up to six style elements into an HTML tag for every tag used in developing a web project. That's very hard to do. It doesn't make your code look nice. CSS saves a lot of work. The styles definition are normally saved in external CSS files. With an external CSS, if it's an external style sheet file, you can change the look of an entire website by just changing one file. We have some examples of CSS. CSS examples of CSS and the syntax per se. Um, a CSS rule 
set contains of a selector and a declaration block. This is an example of CSS for an HTML element paragraph. The selector P in the red in red points to the HTML element you want to style. The P is the HTML element we are styling here, which is for the paragraph. Then the declaration block, which is in green, contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. In the green block, they have the declaration block. And each declaration includes CSS property and the name, CSS property name and the value separated by a colon. And the CSS declaration always ends with a semicolon. And declaration blocks are surrounded by curl braces. This is another um, example of CSS. In the first one I showed there, on, this is um, um, element selector to style whichever elements, HTML elements. Then this one is the ID selector, which is used to style um, an element by an, by its ID, using its ID. Then we have the class selector, which is used to style a class, a class element for a tag. Coding part, the coding process of this um, video. This is the main. This is the interesting part of this video. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using VS Code, a Visual Studio Code Code Editor. Uh, I'm a fan of NetBeans. I normally use NetBeans for all of my projects. So this is Visual Studio Code Editor. Open a new. We're going to name it. We're going to name it HTML tutorial. Yeah, HTML tutorial. We should the code will be updated after I restart. Oh, okay. So under this HTML tutorial folder, let's create a new file. Let's call it index.html. Yeah, so in this index.html is where we're going to define our HTML tag, which is going to be displayed on the web on the using the browser. So for this project, I'm using Emet. Emet is a nice plugin for Visual Studio Code. It can be used on in other in other IDs, web um, development environments. It's very fast. So if I just type the exclamation signs and I press tab, see it can give me a lot necessary um, needed basic tags for HTML and every of my um, tags is going to go into the body section anyway I'm going to do in a, another video on image later on but for now let's just focus on basic HTML coding another another useful functionality of Visual Studio Code is that as a live server which you can oh, which you can use whenever creating a project whenever you save it's going to reload uh, let me see where that is extensions okay live server this is it this is the left server. So, how do you turn it on? Okay, it says it alt alternate L and O to open the server, and alternate L and close to close the server. Okay, so now let's open the server. Alternate L. Oh, okay, you can see right here it says starting port 550. Server is started at port 550. Okay, so it takes us to
okay now so you can see we have a blank HTML document page because we haven't added anything yet into the body tag though we have different tags yeah but we don't have any tags in the body so it's not going to be visible because everything in the body tag is what is going to be visible to the user to uh, a web uh, to the user viewing the page so now before i start this i would like to show you guys some html cheat sheets which i found online uh this is one this is one of the cheat sheets i found online i'm going to put a link to it in the description below so you can check it out it has a lot of necessary tags like you see we have the basic tags which is html tag the head tag the body tag the title tag we have the tags for the formatting create a new paragraph br insert a line break block code put um content in the code we have the div used to format block content the span uh, we have a lot the ul the dl the dt the, the sides the code the emphasize the image hr for the links the form tags impute tag in fact it also has the new html5 input tag attributes table its attributes and so on and so forth i'm going to put a link to it in the description so you can check it out and another one i found is this one for html5 you see some new tags like the address acronym abbreviations articles sorry this acronym tag is not supported in html5 you have the audio aside base body block codes header output object legend label strong small and so on and so forth i'm going to put a link to this also in the description so let's start with our coding okay let me just close this one okay so now let's do some changes to this as you can see we have the head meta meta tags then i'm gonna just going to name this html tutorial okay then in the body tag let's just have a div you see sorry i'm just gonna make that small letters div Then we're going to have, let's just have a paragraph P. Then in the paragraph, let's put something. Lorem, let's say 20. Then what Lorem 20 is going to do is just going to take some words from Lorem Ipsum and put it for us. I can just have lorem 20 lorem 10 the 10 means the number of words that i want to take from the lorem so let's load these and see what we're going to have ctrl s and let's see you could see that the the title of the document has changed from documents to html tutorial and this is the lorem if some we added in the body tag okay so let's get rid of this and do some meaningful stuff okay now i'm just going to write i'm just going to create an h1 tag and in the h1 i'm going to put html tutorial one i'm just clean this up Okay, I'm going to put this in the center, so I'll say center, then the closing tag, 
I'm just gonna move this one into the center tag. Oh, sorry, it's going to be cut and paste it there. So when we reload, we are going to have this in the center. So now there you go. It's already aligned in the center. Let's put a couple of more um H tags, other tags also in the center. So I'm just gonna put this down. Bring this down also. Okay. Tab. Let's have the H2. H2 tag. And I'm gonna put same HTML tutorial. Two. Also, let's have the H3 tag. H3. Set HTML tutorial. Three. Let me have one more. H4. H4. HTML tutorial. Four. Okay, let's save that and see what we have. Here you go. So these are different types of the H tag. You have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Uh, okay, that's that for the H tags. So another tag I'm going to be using. Let me check our cheat sheet and see the copy tag we want to use. We already have the HTML, we already have the head, we already have the body, we already have the title. Okay, for the body attributes, we can just put a BG color for a body. Okay, let's say body, it's an attribute BG color equals to, let's give it um, green. Let's save that and see what we've got. Uh, okay, so you can see we successfully changed the color of the page from the regular white to green color, which is pretty awesome. So now let's make it just some tags also. Let's see which other tag we have to use. We've used the H1 up to H6 here. Okay, so let's create a bold text. Actually, B, this B is used for creating bold text, but in HTML5, it's no longer B, it's strong. But I'm gonna use both of them so you see what I'm saying. The B tag is still the same as bold. So let me just write, um, uh, this is an HTML tutorial using the B tag. Then also I'm going to use the strong, the strong tag. Also write this is an HTML tutorial. Let's save that and see. It's still the same thing. It's just that. HTML5 now support strong and these are for previous versions of HTML So let's reload that and see There you go. Oops. Okay. Let's just put a BR tag for the line break BR and let's see Yeah, so it's basically the same thing. There's no difference between the B and strong but strong is used in html5 and b is used in previous html versions see another um tag we can use um okay just b the i for italics for creating italics so let's make this one 
italics also let's use i and make this is an html tutorial let's save that and see what we've got okay you can see oh, let me just put a br, a BR line break br then another br here and save that okay now see this is to make the text italics so let's take another tag okay so you see the strong tag we already used that the address is just for creating address but we don't need that okay let's go to the link which is a very very important very very important tag in html so let's use create let's create an hyperlink to uniform resource locator url like i said earlier on so we have a sorry i'm used to using emet or drive let's link to a non-existent file let's just say file dot html then the closing tag let's just say this is a link to a file save that and see what we've got so there you go this is a link to a file when you click on it it's going to go to another place it's just like the normal iPad link when you click on it it's going to go to but because we don't have file.html you see you cannot get file.html the normal um, notepad or whatever ID you're using it's going to show file not found because I'm using live server for VS code this is the error I'm getting so let's go back Okay, that's that. So let's pick up another tag we can use. Um, let's use. You know what? Let's create a form. Let's create a form. So for a form tag, for a form, we need the form tag. Form. We have the name of the form. Let's name it form. We have the method. Method can either be get or post. We're gonna go into this in another video, another tutorial. Then we have the action. The action is where we are submitting the form to. Let's just leave it blank. Then what else? We have the ink type for data for the form. We have the multi parts, we have the text plane of the application. I'm going to be using the multi part form data, then close it. So now let's put some input tag, input type after me, type text. Okay, so let's just say name. sorry name we have another input input type let's say name also but there's one thing about um input types input tag sorry you need to give it a name if you're dealing with if you really want to submit the form you have to give it a name <coughs> let's say name We have the name, the ID, but the name is important if you're submitting it. The ID is optional, you don't really need it. Input, sorry, input type for here is text. Sorry. So we give it a name. Let's say, 
last name let me give it L name and call this last name oops so let me write let me put another input tag input tag I'm going to call it type uh, number let's take any number this time around then we'll say uh, mm, let's just say number of days let's have another input tag input tag and I'm going to call this tel to get a telephone say phone number Okay, you know what? Let's have one more for email type email. You can see we have different types of attributes for input. We have the button, we have the checkbox, we have the color, we have the date, date time, date time, local, email, file, heading, image, month, number, and so on and so forth. Password, radio. So I'm going to be using the email. And let's see email address. I think that's all. So let's see and see what we've got. Oops. Okay. So we have the form. We have the name, the last name, the number of days. The phone number and the email address you know what I'm just gonna format this pretty well because it's not looking nice so at least it's, it's not still looking nice okay you know I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it like that so at least you know the so yeah I can put in a text I can put in a text here also yeah i can put in a text because it's a number field but if i put in a number you see they are going there this place also is a phone number if i put in number it's gonna go let me try putting text same thing but the validation is going to be done by the web developer so this is an email So let's see another tag we're going to use. Okay, so this is pretty um, HTML input tag attributes that I showed you earlier on before. So creating a table. Let's create a table. I want to create a table in another div. div tab enter. Let's create a table. Table. Wait, table. Let's create the head. T. T head. In the head, we're going to have this is a table. Then the body parts. T body. We're going to have th um, th for let's say column one and let's have another th column then let's have tr uh, sorry I did a mistake here we need to have the tr first here we have to create a row first then I'm gonna close this here 
okay so let's have another tr let's create the rows then we have the td the data that is going in um this this is a table data one then let's have another td cd this this is a table data two okay since we have two two edits and two two heads we have to have two pro two um data so let's save this and see what we've got Okay, there you go. This center then okay, let's close here center closing tag. Save that and let's see. Okay, so this is the table in the center. Um but it's not looking pretty nice so i'm just going to add some attributes into the table so let me say border let me give it one uh, let's save that and see what we've got yeah it looks pretty much like a table now because we have the border so let's have another so i can increase the border size i can make it two make it three whichever figure i like so let's make it three and see how it looks like so it's just going to increase the border size the the thickness of the border that's just what it's going to do there <laughs> so this is the table data this is the row this is the header and this is the table head. Okay, let's create another row and see. Row and let's put in some data. Let's say this is table data two. Sorry, three. And let's do another one again. CD. This is table data four. Save that and see. You can see we have um another row added to the table. Okay, you know I'm just gonna copy this and so we can have five rows. I'm gonna copy it in two more places. One, two. Uh, let me just format this. so we have um five rows one two three four five the header so that's that's for the table let's see if we can get another okay so this is it the border okay let's add the cell spacing attributes to the table and see what's gonna happen cell spacing Oops. Let me just give it two which other attributes do we have that we can use the table width the tr align v align row span core span okay okay this is the cell spacing this is the cell spacing you can notice the difference so let's use uh, one of these attributes for the table, the row spanner. Let's create another row. T 
CR okay so that's that about the table let's see if we can get another tag to use oh that's all uh, okay let me use one more one more which is the list it's a very very important tag the list tag so outside of this div I'm just going to create a new div tab um, I'm just going to create, we have two types of list, the ordered list and the unordered list. So I'm just going to create two types. Let me start with the UL, the unordered list. And every UL should have, sorry, an LI, an LI. Oops, I'll say this. Is list one then I'm just gonna copy this control C control V control V control V control V I think five is enough so I'm just gonna say this is list five list four list three list two okay and that is that for the UL and another type of list we have is the OL which is the ordered list then it has an attribute of type you can use A let's use A then OL then we have the LI I'm just copy this LIs in it and you see the difference I'm just gonna make it Five, five, four, three, two. Okay, you know what? Let me just make another OL type of another type. So you see what I'm talking about. Control V. Let's just make this OL type of one. Uh, Okay, let's make another oil type. Oil type of I. Sorry. Roman numeral I. And let me just give it a page break. PR. PR. PR PR So let's save this Let's save these and see what we get You know what, I'm just going to remove this center line I'm just going to remove the center line And Save it Yeah, perfect So this is it this is the unordered list without it's just going to give you some bullets list blessed list and this one is going to give you ordered let me put in some editing there so it's it's going to be easy to differentiate and give it an h2 mm. unordered list x2 ordered list save that so here we go we have the unordered list we have the ordered list um what else again let's see if you can get another oh okay let's try and use the hr tag the hr let's put the hr somewhere here which creates an horizontal line and it can also have an attribute some attributes also the size 
size equals to one. Save that. So this is the HR tag we have. Make it three. So there you go. This is the size three. Let me increment it. Let me say nine. And let's see. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a huge size. Okay. So there you go. This is the HR. The thickness of the HR. This is it. Mm, which other tag can we use? Which other tag can we use? You know what? Let's insert an image. So to insert an image, let's just put it right below the R. This is an HR this time around. And let's give the HR uh, size size of 2 and let's give it another attribute let's give it an attribute of width let's just make it uh, 180 pixels you can also make it let's make it 50 percent percent save that and let's see what we achieved with that yeah, there you go. This is it. This is the HR tag at the bottom with a width of 50%. That's 50% of the screen size. So now let's insert our image. The image tag is IMG. Um, source. And this says, um, you know what? Let me get an image online. Let me get an image. Okay, let me get an image from Google. You can get images from Pixels also. Well, I just want a, a low quality image. I'm just going to use it for this tutorial, for the sake of this tutorial. From Pixels, you can get high quality images, very, very high quality images. So let me just save this. Oh, you know what? Let me just make a link. Let me just use a link to the image. I'm just going to copy the link address. Sorry. I'm going to copy image address, not link address, image address. And in my VS code, in the source attribute, I'm going to paste the link to the image. Actually, it's from the Vitry schools. Then other attributes we can, you can add in the image tag is the alt, which is the alternate text in case image doesn't display so you can say this is an image then another tag is the title tag which when you over on the image is going to display so let's say this is an image title then we have the closing tag image tag is one of the tags that doesn't have an ending tag it's only have uh, an opening tag so let's save this and see what is going to display so there you go when i over on this you see this is an image title and i leave there and i over it again this is an image title there's some other attributes you can use for this image like border let's try to give the image border let's set the image border to 2 and save that let's see you can see this black let me let me increase it so you're gonna see it very well let me give it a border size of 5 so it's going to be bold you can see yeah that's it you can see this tiny this black line around the image this is the border we have some other attributes for the image we have the image width the height okay let's align this image to the center 
let's align this image to the center center let's add one other attribute width let's give it a width of um, 300 pixels no let's give it a width of 250 pixels let's give it the height of mm, let's give it the height of 250 also 250 250 save that and see here you go see the size of the image is reduced to 250 by 250 I'm trying to make this video one hour long so basically these are the things we have for the HTML part so let's go into the CSS part for this um, tutorial we're going to be using an external CSS so let's go to Explorer and let's create an C CSS file. So let's call it style.css. So in this style the CSS, we're going to style every element here. We're going to style every element in this um file. So let's start with the body instead of having this bg color green we can just get rid of this and put it in the style.css so let's create body body um, class so let's say b background color background color let's give it um olive let's give it olive uh, okay let's just do that basically for now save that and reload oh sorry <laughs> I, I haven't referenced the CSS file so to reference that I'm going to put it in the add tag link um ref sorry rel style sheets style sheets refer reference it pitch ref to style ty -E dot css save that should be able to yeah there we go. So this is a way of referencing a CSS file. So now we can do with a CSS file over here. So what else should we try to uh you know what? Let's deal with this h1, the h1 tags, the h tags. Sorry. So I have h1, comma, h2, comma, h3, comma. I think we have up to h4, comma. Sorry. Change the font family. Let's give it. Uh, let's give it Franklin Gothic Medium. Sans serif. And let's save and see what we've got. So you can see, and you can notice a difference in the um, font of these h h h tags. I like h one <laughs> h tags. So now we can pretty do the same for the instead of giving it to only the h tags, we can just give it to the whole. Uh, document itself to the whole page itself so I'm just gonna copy this and paste it into the body tag 
basically every um, font on the page is going to be within this font family so save that and gonna notice the changes so you see changes in the font font type of every element on this page so let's do another thing let's style the p the paragraph so for the p we're going to have font size font size let's say 15 px pixels let me just make the font size 30 it's not too big well so there you go this is the font size for the p that's that we have for the html so in the next tutorial i'm going to style this up i'm going to spice the page up and make it look nicer than this to make a nice web page attractive web page so that's all for now make sure you like subscribe and comment and click the bell icon so you can notify of my video whenever i post a video so that's it about that see you